Good morning, University Christian Church and friends. Thank you for joining us this morning for our worship time together. I know many of you are still clicking and joining us and participating and sharing in this sacred time together as we are still practicing community during a pandemic. It's been a challenging season for for us, for all of you, and so I'm just grateful that you're finding your way to join us here today and that you're looking for some hope, some renewal, some grounding in this challenging time in which we live. My name is Nathan Hill. I'm the pastor here at University Christian Church, so thank you for joining us, especially if you're just finding us today. If you're looking for a church, you're looking for a word of hope today, thank you for joining us. An easy way to connect with us is to go to our website at uccmd.org slash contact. And that'll take you right to our contact form. And you can send us a note, ask to be put on the email list. You can share a prayer concern with us or just a question or a desire to be connected with me or another staff person at the church. It's good to see each and every one of you this morning. Dottie, it's good to see you and Charles Sheets and... Uh, Margie, uh, the Gannons, Jean Lee, Chris and Linda Bach, Marsha and Hank Matiga. Please tell Chris he should be watching. Eric uh, the, and the Torgerson family, so good to see you from the Apparitios, from Christy and Skip. So our numbers are going up. This is what happens. We're sort of starting uh, just with a burst of energy this morning. I know folks will be joining us throughout the live stream. So please say hello in the comments so that we can say hello to you back a little bit later in the service okay oh from Janice and Smitty good morning and he good morning and Harriet Troop good morning wow we're so glad to see you all a couple of, of a little things about our service today um, that we will have a prayer time earlier in the service so begin to think about those prayer concerns um, that you uh, want to lift up and and you might just share a name you can just share for a friend you don't have to put all the details and we'll have that just after our opening praise time i'll be leading us in that good morning alex brown and Lori uh, and elnora and the duffs are, are watching and monica welch and barbara bice wow um <laughs> leah and kitty good morning good morning good morning wow uh, so good to see you all this morning okay well, we're here to worship, and it's been another difficult week. And while there are signs that this pandemic is under control, and but we're still in a, an immense disruption in our society as people cry out for justice and as we have joined them in that cry. So bring all of that today. Bring all of that complexity today and know that the presence of God presence of God is with us. Let us worship together. Let us worship with joy. Let us offer our prayers to God. Let us gather at the table. May we be transformed and fed as we leave this time together. Amen. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing. Oh, praise Him, hallelujah. Thou burning sun with golden beams, thou silver moon with softer gleams, Oh, praise Him, oh, praise Him, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Thou rushing wind that art so strong, ye clouds that sail in heaven along, oh, praise Him, hallelujah. Thou rising morning, praise 
always rejoice. Ye lights of evening, find a voice. Oh, praise Him. Oh, praise Him. Alleluia. 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 Things their Creator bless and worship Him in humbleness. Oh, praise Him, Alleluia! Praise, praise the Father, praise the Son, and praise the Spirit, three in one. Oh, praise Him, oh, praise Him, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Amen. Thank you, Pat. Please hear from Psalm 61 as we enter into a time of prayer. Hear my cry, O God, listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I call to you when my heart is faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you are my refuge, a strong tower against my enemy. Let me abide in your tent forever find refuge under the shelter of your wings. So we ponder those words and the goodness of God and the God's desire to shelter us, especially in times of, of fear and anxiety and challenge, especially when our world is changing, when we are being called to live courageously and boldly to love our neighbors to seek a transformed world. God hears our cry. God listens to our cries for help. And God gathers us like a mother gathers her hens, like a mother chicken gathers her, her chicks. So please, let's, uh, uh, let's join together in a time of prayer. Please share if it's just the name, if it's just a phrase like for a friend. We will lift that up in prayer. And then I will close this in prayer. And then our ensemble will lead us to continue at sense of prayer through song. Do we have any prayers to lift up today? And of course, we begin by lifting up all of those young people, such a diverse array, a Pentecost kind of crowd that have been gathering all over the country to proclaim that black lives matter, that, that those who are vulnerable and hurting matter, that, that their voices matter in this time. And and that's the safety and care of our communities matter. So we lift up all of those young people who are crying out for change and ask God to be with them in this time. Even as we ask God to continue to be with our communities and all the anxiety and stress that there is. And all of those who are out responding to calls for distress. All of those who are seeking peace right now in our communities. Oh Lord, be with them. We pray for Anthony for continued healing. Yes, um, we lift up Anthony for continued healing. For my father who had surgery this past week and is now healing as well. Yeah. And Robin also shares praying for our young people, protesting for continued push for justice. Amen. Amen. Lord, we ask that we please pray for all of us. Oh, what a prayer. Yeah, to pray for all of us. That this time brings us to an age of enlightenment and understanding that we might be able to listen and hear one another and, and grow stronger together. Yes, thank you, Lori, for that beautiful prayer. Um, are there others that we should pray for as well in our midst? Um, 
course, we lift up, as Scripture tells us, to pray for the widows and orphans and those who have no family in this time or those who are disconnected from their families. We pray that they might have comfort and that they might know that they are loved and strengthened. For the McNabb Frey family, for health providers who are risking their lives in ways to care and battle with those who have COVID-19, Pray for Jean's friend, Lynn, who is having surgery this coming week. And um, also, yeah, for those who are in all of our communities, standing out, calling for justice in Greenbelt, in Hyattsville, and College Park. For those at high risk of dying from COVID-19, Jim asks us to pray. For the Prince George's County Police, John Farley asks us to pray. We lift up those first responders who are feeling the stress of this time as well. For whom else should we pray? Of course, we pray for our church and our leadership as we make difficult decisions in this time, as we um, try to do our best to be good stewards of the resources we have and, and plan for reopening our building when the time is right. For Reverend Rachel Frey and McNabb family, thank you, Sarah, for correcting us. For all others who are seeking healing and hope, for those who are wrestling with the great of this time, we pray. And for uh, Smitty's neighbor, Pat, who suffered a stroke and is, uh, six weeks ago and is recovering at a good pace and appreciates continued prayers. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Let's take all of these and others that may be on your heart or you may not have had the chance to share. Um, and that's okay. You know, God hears us. And thank you, Robin, for lifting up me and my family in this time. I really appreciate that. Appreciate that so much. Let's pray together. O oh, gracious and loving God, God who is our refuge and our strength, and we recognize in this time there is so much pain and, and there's so much uh, uh, challenge to us as people crowd our streets and march for justice and transformation, demanding more from our leaders, demanding more for how uh, we as a society can do our best to keep one another safe. So Lord, we, we ask in this time that you would be our refuge and strength in such a way that we might be uh, able to extend that to our hurting community in this time, that through your strength we might hear one another afresh, that we might see each other, that we might not draw into the trap of being separated and divided, but find that you are always in the midst drawing us back together, even when we disagree, even when we are angry, even when we are upset that somehow you are at work calling us to be community, and in community so many things are possible. Healing is possible. And strength and safety and love is possible. Reconciliation becomes possible. So Lord, continue to give us courage to name where we are and name with, com with compassion and, and our passion how we long for justice to be made known in this time and place. Oh Lord, we trust that you will guide us into this uncertain future together. You've heard these prayers that we have lifted up together, and we believe that, that you are such an amazing God that, that somehow you can even read Facebook comments. I know that's wild, or, or YouTube comments, but God, you are so big beyond our understanding that you know what's in our hearts. You know the words before we speak them. And that comes out of your love and your devotion to us and to creation. So God, comfort us, guide us, be with us anew in this time as we seek healing, as we seek hope, as we seek to be the change, as we seek the safety for, of our community and justice for all. Oh Lord, we lift these prayers to you and, and keeping in mind all of those who are hurting and uncertain, all of those who still don't know where their next paycheck is coming from, trusting 
that just as you have been there for us, you will be there for them. We pray all of this in the name of our Creator, who gives us strength. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Hello University Christian Church. My name is Emily Hill. Today I'm going to be making a post protest poster with you. So for this you're going to be needing paper, a pencil, and markers. You're going to start out with just writing down your message with your pencil. After you wrote down your message, it you will most likely outline it with markers so everybody can see. And then you'll have something like this. Your message can be long, short, it doesn't matter. The message is just what tells people what you believe and what you think is right. So I wrote Black Lives Matter and I drew the Black Lives Matter logo here. Last week I went to a protest and the protest was kneeling down, everybody kneeling down for nine minutes for in memory of George Floyd. 
and it was very moving. Everybody, well, not everybody, but some people brought posters, and those posters had different messages on it. Some messages were long, some messages were just simple, but everybody had their own way to express what they feel. I hope you guys can do this at your house, and if you don't go to a protest, you can always just put it up on your window so that everybody, everybody can see what you believe. If you made a poster, take a photo and share it to the University Christian Church website. Thank you for joining the cause. Bye. Good morning, church. Today's scripture reading is from Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 through Genesis chapter 2, verse 4a. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be an expanse between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the expanse and separated the water under the expanse from the water above it. And it was so. God called the expanse sky. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place and let dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground land and the gathered waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them serve as signs to mark seasons and days and years and let them be lights in the expanse of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the expanse of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the water team with living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea and every living and moving thing with which the water teams according to their kinds and every ringed bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, be fruitful and increase in number and fill the water in the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, livestock, creatures that move along the ground and wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all of the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it, 
rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the air and all the creatures that move on the ground, everything that has breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he had made and it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work and he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it, he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Victoria, for reading that powerful passage. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So I need your help for this sermon, and I realize I didn't do my own job here, uh, but I need you to grab a pillow. Maybe you've got one there on your couch or one at hand, or maybe you're still lounging in your bed. You haven't gotten up yet, which I don't blame you. Uh, it's, you know, but grab one. Maybe it's in another room. Let me see what I can find here. Uh, I'll stop, step off camera for just a second. Um, um, uh, this... Pillow is a little big, but this is one of the couch pillows here down we have in the family room where I'm, I'm live from. And uh, maybe maybe you, you like a big pillow, you know, you like one with some firmness. Uh, maybe you like those travel pillows. I got one for my wife a little bit ago. Um, and, uh, oh, here comes, here comes, uh, in fact, speak of that. So here's, here's a good example. You know, whenever we, uh, before, uh, somehow you get this thing on, before, uh, you, uh, you know, before the pandemic, when we would go on occasional airplane rides, I got this for my wife so she could take a nice break on the plane. But whatever it is, whatever your looks like, I, I, I want you to hang tight to this pillow as we think about this passage today. Because our scripture story tells the story of creation. It's the very first verse of the, in the whole Bible. If you've ever tried to pick up the Bible from the first page and read, you're going to be, you're going to encounter this passage right away. And, and of course, uh, I'm going to be clear here, it's not a scientific story. And I know there have been times where Christians have claimed that, that this is the scientific, this is like a scientific textbook about how the world was put together. But I don't think the ancient Jews, Jewish people who, who told these stories and recorded them, I don't think they saw it as a textbook, and, and I don't think, I think we miss something when we try to read it in that way. We lose what, what the people of faith, our ancestors in faith, are, are, are sharing with us. But it does say something very important about who God is. Because at the end of the passage, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 2, God rests. God creates this landscape in this world, drawing brush strokes to, to lay the foundation and, and hang sun and moon and sprout lush vegetation and even those creepy crawly things, which some of you would probably have argued with about God creating. Uh, but in the whole process, God paints this incredible, incredible vivid landscape in which we live and cosmos. And God says, it is good. And God didn't say, mm, well, uh, maybe I'll, I'll redo that. Or God didn't say, hmm, that could have gone out a little bit better. But God says, it is good. And when it was all done, the Creator, the Alpha and Omega, pulled out a divine pillow. Maybe it was a travel pillow. Maybe it was something like you have in your hands. And, and laid down and took a long nap. God took the day off. I wonder, I wonder what it would look like right now if all of humanity and all of creation could take a day off. Of course, 
It doesn't really feel like in this moment we can take a day off. We are still in the midst of a pandemic that is causing us great stress and fear. And, and though the numbers keep ticking upward, we're also at an inflection moment uh, in our culture, confronted again with the reality of injustice and racism that keeps wounding us and tearing us apart. How can you take a day off when our neighbors are rising up to march for justice? How can we take a day off when we are surrounded by a system that is literally choking the life out of black and brown lives? How can we take a day off when too many are lining up for food resources? Too many can't pay rent. Too many have little hope in the future that lies ahead. Ijeoma Oluo, a black author and activist, cried out on her social media feed this week as she thought about this long continued struggle for her community. She writes, when is our chance to rest, to recover? For how many generations will we have to fight to survive? When, and I, this is, these are my words, when might we be able to finally take a day off and just breathe? Breathe the goodness of this creation. Another way to look at Genesis chapter 1 as, is as a spiritual protest against a vile, vile narratives that were present in the day in, ancient, in the ancient Middle East. Because there are other creation stories in the ancient Middle East about how human beings and, and the world are products of violence and chaos. In the Gilgamesh story, for instance, two powerful gods go to war against each other. And in their violence, and in their, their, they crush and they battle each other, the, the continents are shaped. And finally, when one god is, is wounded and killed, each drop of blood from this deity lands upon the earth, and, and where it lands, it becomes a human being. So in other words, we are made out of violence and chaos. But then we hear in Genesis 1, these ancient Jewish scholars and storytellers and faithful proclaiming an alternative. Where all of creation is not a byproduct of chaos and violence, but a product of a God who has a plan. A God who has imagined and brought into being something good. Creation is laid out carefully with love, with God taking a step back every, every part of every day. Every step in the creation process to marvel at how beautiful and right it is. This is an image of a creator who is intimately involved in the tiny details of, of the lives of all living things, including the smallest insects and the sometimes annoying weeds that sprout up wherever we look. This image that we get from Genesis 1 and 2 is not a giant white bearded man in heaven but more of a loving mother decorating a nursery in excited anticipation for the coming of her loved ones, making sure everything is just right. And rather than recede from the picture or go off and work on some other project, God lingers, taking the well-deserved break before uh, uh, diving back into the clay and muck and beauty of life. Genesis 1 and 2, for me, speaks this truth that our Creator infused human beings and all of the earth and cosmos with the desire to flourish and the capacity to rest. The desire to flourish and the capacity to rest. Right now, as people march and cry out and work in all kinds of different ways for justice, we recognize that we humans have found ever destructive ways to take this incredible gift of life and creation and mess it up. We have created instruments of war and ways of life that rob the breath from our neighbors and steal the life from the soil, quite literally. Sometimes we have simply settled for the status quo. Although sometimes, when the time was right, we have risen up and worked to correct some of those awful mistakes. 
And of course, I think that is exactly what God desires of us and expects of us. God expects us to use the, our hands and feet and our minds to be fruitful with each day that we are given to shape this earth and be better caretakers of this gift that we receive. God's plan for us and desire for all of creation was, was not that we would struggle day in and day out in an endless loop of exhaustion and gasping for breath, but that we should be able, like our loving Creator, to step back and rest in the fullness and beauty of who we are. When George Floyd cried out, I can't breathe, when so many others cry out for breath right now in our streets, in homes, in hospitals. When even as, as Reverend William Barber said this week in an interview that all of democracy is crying out for breath. What we are experiencing is not God's will or God's design for us. God created and designed a world in which we all may breathe. God desires in creation which no one should struggle for justice and equality every day. God longs for a cosmos that is permeated with love for all things and all people. God has given us in these first chapters of Genesis a vision of where we might go as a human family. And as is often the case, God points down that road and invites us along the journey challenging us to do our work and our struggle along the way to correct sometimes the ways that we have messed it up. The truth is we all have a part in this work. Whether we have been part of the status quo, whether we have looked away as our neighbors have cried out for breath, whether we have suffered silently, whether we have been marching all of our lives. As a church, as University Christian Church, as the church at the intersection, we haven't been a part and will continue to be a part of that kind of work. Certainly, we haven't always gotten it right. But I think about those times, like in the Day Center, when the Day Center was able to gather in our building before this pandemic, and I would be running an errand in the church, going around, picking up something, checking on something. Sometimes I needed to step into the sanctuary during the day center hours. And I would walk through those doors and, and was, be, was lost in thought and then become suddenly aware that there were neighbors in need who came into the sanctuary to lay down on our seats and rest and sleep. For them, sometimes sleeping out in the streets, it was difficult. It's difficult to find a quiet place, a safe place to lay their head. And how grateful they are to come into that quiet, peaceful sanctuary and lay down and know that they can rest undisturbed. That's what God desires for those who are hurting and those who are struggling, places to rest and the refuge of our Lord, of our Creator. And our work as church is to make sure no one ever has to struggle to find a place to rest so that we don't need sanctuaries in the future for people to lay their heads, but all have safety and security in this land and in this world. And as a church, we did it again on Thursday night when we were close to 400 neighbors gathering at our intersection for eight minutes and 46 seconds of silence and vigil, listening and dreaming and challenging one another to live into a world where no one has to struggle for breath. I'm proud of you, church, for being the church at the intersection in this difficult time. So today is Sunday. And the week lies ahead. And it's not a week for us to lounge around. God was productive and and flourished in the creative gift of of laying out each day and all of the beauty of this earth. So this is a week for us to join in God with that kind of work and, and choose to shape the kind of world that we want to create for others and for ourselves. 
So I wonder how you will commit to helping your neighbors breathe a little more deeply this week. Maybe you can type that in the comments and share it with us of one thing that you're going to do to help someone around you breathe a little easier. And then, of course, take the day off. Maybe you need to take today off. This is the day of the Lord after all. I give you permission. Your, your, this is your pastor speaking. I give you permission to use your pillow this afternoon and take a blessed nap. Mindful of all those who are struggling to rest right now. And then with that renewed sense of energy, move into action so that all may flourish and all may take a rest from the struggles of this time because they don't have to struggle anymore. Thanks be to God for that call and for the gift and beauty and wonder of creation. Thanks be to God. Amen. Church, you are so amazing, so generous of your resources, of your talents, of your leadership in this time. Thank you. Thank you for all the ways you give. Hmm. Jesus said, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give 
you rest. The thing about Jesus, about following Jesus, I think the thing that so many people who came to know Jesus and, and experienced such radical change in his presence was that when they got to know him, they knew they could be who they are. They didn't have to fake it. They didn't have to be defensive and scared. They could be vulnerable and know that they were loved. They could rest in his presence. So today as we share at this table, I invite you to rest in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. For we remember on the night that Christ was betrayed, he took bread, he blessed it and broke it and said, This is my body given for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. In like manner later in the supper, Christ took the cup and he blessed it and he shared it with his disciples saying, Take and drink each of you. This is the cup of the new covenant. My blood poured out for you for the forgiveness of sin. Take and drink in remembrance of me. So if you have elements at home, uh, bread or juice or what, whatever might work, or if you just want to spend this time in prayer, know that these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Please join us as we share in the sacred meal after the prayers of our elders over the bread and the cup. Let us pray for the bread. Gracious Father, we, your children, come once more before you. We acknowledge that we have fallen short with our understanding of your commandments. Our sinful souls cry out for your mercy and continuous forgiveness as we too forgive others. Father, these are precarious times. We face COVID-19, a pandemic that is not too shy to bring us home to you. We continue to mistrust and mistreat our fellow man as if he is not a member of your spiritual family. So in the example of your chosen son, Jesus, we all dare to this loaf, which represents Christ's broken body. Rain down your blessings as we partake of this symbolic food, which renews faith. With this gesture, we call on you, Lord, to afford us added patience and strength to deal with all of humanity's hills. Direct us on a new path of reconciliation and full acceptance of our brothers and sisters. Show our politicians the true path to pass laws of equal justice across the vast face of this earth. The genuine demonstrators have labored for over 400 years. It is ripe time our legislators take hold of the button and establish true and full acceptance of your people as full humans, full of grace, full and overflowing with the loving blood of Christ. We call on the fearers of our time to let our people go. Amen. God of mercy and justice, we come together at your table during a very difficult and painful time in our lives. As we experience the present situation in our country, help us to remember and celebrate the precious gift of life you have given us, a life that does not deserve to be taken away capriciously by another human being as if it was of no value, for we know that in your eyes we are priceless. During this time of unrest, open our eyes that we may be able to discern the injustices being brought down on our brothers and sisters of color. As we partake of your cup, may we be filled with and invigorated by your Holy Spirit. Guide and protect your people as we fight for justice. For we know that if God is for us, who can be against us? In the precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Amen. Again, thank you all for joining us today. I hope you have plans for a gorgeous day and take seriously my invitation to rest, to rest, to, to recharge yourself. Um, you know, we, the, the change that we often seek begins in each of us. And if we're not taking care of ourselves, uh, then it's really hard for us to, to help others and support others and to to do work that we want to do out in our communities and neighborhoods. So please take this day to rest and savor the blessedness of creation. A few announcements before we send you out um, that we did put out this week a reopening survey put together by our task force for reopening. Please take a moment and fill it out and we want one per person. So even youth and children, you're invited to share your thoughts. Um, but that way, so we just know, we are gathering your information and you can be very honest. You don't have to put your name there. So you can just tell us how you feel about how things are going and what you're worried about as we think about reopening the building in the future. Again, we're not in any hurry. We have supplies ordered and other things that we will wait for before we even begin to put an opening date in place. Some of those supplies are not coming until July. They are back ordered. So we are just doing the best we can. I'm grateful for the task force. So please take a moment. We posted it in the group on Facebook and we did send it out on Friday in our email list. So if, um, if you need that or if you need the link, we will send it out afresh or you can always contact the church office. One thing we do need is that we would love church members to make a, an assortment of masks so that we have those on hand when we do move toward a reopening and we have some extras just in case a visitor walks in or someone walks in who has forgotten their mask that they won't feel like they have to turn around and go home, but that we'll have masks on hand uh, to, for, for them. And so that would be a great help to us. So that, that's an easy way for you to support the work of the task force. Number two, I wanna say thank you again to our church and, and many of our leaders, including Ramona Crawford and Jim Duff, uh, and all of our ushers, Hisela, Lucky, um, Chris Matiga, uh, uh, I'm, I'm blanking on some of y'all who were incredible, um, 
incredible gifts uh, to make our vigil happen in a safe fashion, keeping everyone at distance, maintaining social distance, um, and, and, and making sure people felt really comfortable. We saw so many other, we saw some nice responses, people thanking us for making that space available outside, and, and what a gift it was for the community to come together in solidarity that evening. So uh, thank you all for, um, um, thank you all for your help as a church. Number three, um, this whole month of June, the movie Just Mercy is available free to rent on major renting platforms. So if you have an Apple device or Amazon device or uh, Microsoft, or I don't know, you know, whatever, um, you should be able to access the movie Just Mercy. Of course, based on the book by Brian Stevens, an excellent, powerful book. I've used some stories from it before. I am um, challenging us this week to watch it. To watch it in the next couple of days, it's free to rent. It's a couple of hours long. It's a powerful movie that speaks to this moment and speaks to how we are called to do better. And 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 I want us to have a conversation about it then. So right now, I'm tentatively planning for a Zoom conversation this Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. So you might want to watch the movie tonight if you have time, or Monday night, or Tuesday night, or even during the day. And then join us and share your thoughts and your perspectives on the movie. I'll be asking some very specific questions as we do that together. Okay, sounds like fun. Finally, Poor People's Campaign is coming up. This is a virtual mass gathering working to lift up those who are struggling, those who are poor, for, for lifting up those who are fighting for justice. Um, it is led by Reverend William Barber, who is a Disciples of Christ minister and has been pulling together this movement. So on June 20th and 21st, there will be a virtual gathering that we want to invite all church members to be a part of, to sign up for, to listen in on these informative and powerful sessions on the kind of change and the kind of country we want to, to be that lifts up, especially those who are vulnerable and struggling and, and seeks justice. It, it's a, going to be a powerful time. The, ser, the sermons and the worship and the sh testimonies will be life-changing. So we will be putting that out. But you can also just go to poorpeoplescampaign.org, I think, and it has all the information there too. So again, thank you all for joining us today. Thank you for sharing your prayers with us. Yes, the choir was amazing today. Our ensemble was amazing today. We are so, just we're just blessed, y'all. And so I, I'm... I, I just love you. I love you. I love your generosity in this time. Thank you for all the ways you support our ministry, okay? And in fact, we're going to close as sort of our benediction, a um, uh, 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 reprise, um, looking for the word there, of last week's incredible gift, How, how Great Is Our God, uh, in many languages. And so here it is in its full connected production as we send each other out to go and work for a world where no one has to struggle to breathe. A world that God created for us and that we get to be co-creators in and shaping that world to come. Let's go do that creative work with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen.
Let's pray.